12 July 22nd, 2015, town board meeting to order. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Lamore? Here. Mr. Milano? Here. Mr. Calder? Here. Mr. Buffard? Here. Board President? We have a quorum like you all uh, rise for Pledge of Allegiance, led by Mr. Milano. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We're going to start off with a presentation from Brian Baker uh, from the Rotterdam Carmen Little League. Thank you very much for uh, <coughs> having me here tonight. Bob Carter couldn't make it. He's the president of the league. He got called away. Um, I just wanted to present what we've been working on for about a year and a half. Uh, 2013, as probably everybody knows, we merged the Rotterdam Little League and the Carmen Little League for RC Little League. And by doing that, we've grown tremendously. Um, we've this year alone had over 440 kids in the league. Uh, we play at two uh, sites. We play over on Broadway and we play over in Carmen Park. The Broadway field is our minor facility and that houses and handles the kids that we have over there very well. The Carmen fields has four fields and it has an old concession building and the building is pretty much it doesn't suit our needs anymore. Um, we've raised the money um, I'm sorry I don't have a presentation board, but I can give you the plans and, uh, and the anything else you need to build this new building. The league will pay for it. Um, it'll also have, it's about a 1,500 square foot single floor building. Um, it would have concession area. It would have um, two garage areas which we could store all our equipment in and two public bathrooms that could be used, men's and women's. And uh, we would do this and dedicate the building to the town and then the town could utilize the building. There's a pavilion there, and when people use the pavilion, they could also use the restrooms. Um, that's pretty much the extent of what I have. I can give you the, the drawings, and I also have a resume of my company. I'm also a general contractor, too, so we would be building the building for the, uh, for the league. Um, I don't know if anybody has any questions. Or... I have one question. Uh, I was over there in 13 and 12 when they were talking about doing some of the stuff. And... Yep. I met some of the league people over there. They were going to do something way in the back with uh, like a gazebo or something. Are they still going to do that? Yeah, I talked to Mick and he was talking about making the, uh, there's a gazebo, like a pavilion. Yeah. They wanted to make it bigger because it's kind of small and run down. So he talked about if they made it bigger and then we did the concession building, the two could go hand in hand with the bathrooms. And then if somebody wanted to use the, rent the space out or however the town would work it with people for using that area, uh, they could use the restrooms for the building. Um, you know, so kind of cover everything that we want to do. And that is exactly where it's going, where the current pavilion is? No, it's just back by I have the third plan I can give you. Um, okay. It's just below where the current, the pavilion's up on a hill. Yes. This is down more where the scoreboards are. Um, it's kind of a flat area. There's enough room for it down there? Yeah, I, okay. I marked it out. We marked it out and pinned it out last week. Um, and Mickey went over and checked it out. Um, where, oh, like just behind, uh, just if you're familiar right, where the major the field, field is, major field. Yep, where the major field is, where the where the uh, scoreboard goes up, right on that, it would be facing uh, be facing southeast, and then the back of it would be towards the pavilion. What would they do about the? For There's a little bit of a grade the change field there. Then for as far as the outfield, the field on the the t-ball field, the t-ball field would be that far. Is a t-ball field now? There's a t-ball field. There's a, a farm field, and then there's the major field, and then there's a modified field. But this would fit right in the open area that's in the back there with plenty of room around it. Uh, there would be room for the septic area. There would be room to get, when we laid it out, so that all the vehicles, if anybody needed, could get past, um, you know, for safety reasons. So. Sounds like a good program. Uh, I, I can leave these with you if you would like. I also have gotten approval when we started this from Schenectady County, and I'll give you that, from the Public Health Services, of us putting the building together with everything that they asked for, and then sits in here. I can give you that. Did you want to just give it to me? Then? Sure, absolutely. No, can you give this back? No, I have plenty. Okay. Mickey's got two sets of them. Okay, super. Thank you so much. Yep, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Baker. You're welcome. We move on to public hearings. Uh, we have two. Public hearing number one, will the clerk please read? To allow for a comprehensive plan amendment and change of zone request from RM Lent Properties LLC owner for property located at 604 Moraga Road and is known as tax parcel number 
minus 3, minus 4.12, the applicant is requesting a change of zone from heavy industrial I-2 to multifamily residential R-3 to facilitate the construction of apartments on a plus or minus 2.25 acres of the plus or minus 4.33 acre <coughs> parcel. There's one speaker, Luigi Pleshi. <coughs> Good evening, I'm Luigi Pelleschi with ABD Engineers and Surveyors. Uh, we're the engineers and surveyors working with uh, Mr. Lent on this property. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, we're here uh, for the property to do a rezone on 2.25 acres. Uh, we have it outlined here. Uh, currently, the site is uh, operated as an industrial use uh, for the construction company that Mr. Lent runs uh, for Lent Excavating. and by proposing the change of zone for the 2.25 acres, we're uh, lessening the uh, intensity of that use. Uh, we're going from I-2 to uh, R-3 to allow uh, multi-family apartment units. Um, we were before the uh, planning board uh, as a recommendation back to this board, and we received a positive recommendation. And this is a conceptual uh, site plan that we have here. Uh, it's 30 apartment units. Um, it's their septic systems uh, to, to accommodate the, uh, the apartment units, all of this uh, meeting the, the town code. And uh, we're actually hopeful that in the near future, sewer will be available coming up Burdick Street. Uh, so if that's the case, these would be converted to uh, the public sewers. And <clears throat> there's the two remaining parcels. Again, as I mentioned, the existing um, construction facility would remain as I-2. And this corner here at the corner of Burdick Street and Marival Road will also remain as I-2 for now. Uh, but Mr. Lent is hopeful that uh, we'll get retail there. Uh, the idea is to bring the uh, residents in and with the people there, we'll drive the retail. As you know, across the street, you have the Stewart's and you've got uh, Del Gallo pools and the, the barbecue place. And uh, you know, retail really does make sense in this corner, but you need more residents there to, to make that retail survive. Um, if retail doesn't go there, then you know, we'll come back up, you know, possibly for more apartment units. But uh, I just wanted to make a brief presentation for you guys to consider. Um, again, I think the strongest point is it's industrial use now and we're lessening it to uh, to a residential uh, character um, and then just to note on the <coughs> north side here there is an existing uh, apartment complex uh, and i guess that's all i have to say okay thank you anyone else signed up not for that public hearing. Uh, anyone else want to address public hearing number one hearing done i'll have public hearing number one closed we'll move on to public hearing number two clerk please read Request by David Araglio, Moner, for the demolition of the existing single-family dwelling and construction of a new single-family dwelling on a 0.45 acre parcel of property located in the aquifer overlay zone. This property, tax map number 20.5-7-37, is located at 10 Isabella Street, Rotterdam Junction, New York, 12150. Um, I just have a letter to read for um, Andrea and Joe Coppola. It's to Mr. Buffardi and town board members. Dear sir, my husband and I, uh, myself, support David Aragelo's request for the demolition of the existing dwelling and construction of a new dwelling on his property located at 10 Isabella Street, Rotterdam Junction, New York, 12150. Thank you for your consideration in this matter. Sincerely, Andrea and Joe Coppola. And then the next speaker, it will be, let's see here, it says, Bloom. Yep, Mark, Mark Bloom. Okay, Mark, thank you so much. Good evening. Uh, my name is Mark Bloom. I represent the Graf Bloom Custom Builders. Uh, Dave Alargio is my client. I'm going to be building this house. So we're here for the set proposal of demolitioning the house that's there, pretty much ripping out the existing stone foundation and starting with a new home. And that's pretty much it. Okay. Okay. Any, any questions? I, I think we're pretty much okay. understanding of this. Um, anyone else wish to speak to public hearing number two? 
Hearing none, I will close public hearing number two. We're going to move on to public comments, privilege of the floor. Uh, nobody signed up, so can okay, I? Okay, if no one signed up, we won't bother reading the rules of order then. Thank you. We'll move on to the uh, uh, resolutions uh, portion of tonight's meeting. Resolution number 143.15, will the clerk please read? Upon the recommendation of the Chief of Police, appoint and promote Sergeant Jeffrey Collins to the rank of Lieutenant at the Town of Rotterdam Police Department, full-time probationary with full employee benefits and an annual salary of 97777 effective July 22nd, 2015. Any discussion? Uh, yes, Mr. Supervisor. <coughs> um, the starting salary, 97000 almost $98,000 for a lieutenant position. I, in one year, he passed probation, he'll be over 100,000. I really don't think we need to keep adding more and more 100,000 police officers. It's too much. You know, if this salary was like low 80s, I'd be jumping at it. But for 97,000, it's, it's the, the wages are getting out of control is what bottom line is. And we just cannot afford them anymore. That's all I have to say. Any other discussion? Um, my issue is if we promote somebody to lieutenant, the next thing that we're going to have is, in a very short period of time, a motion to promote somebody to backfill a sergeant position, which is required by the contract. And it ends up being a pyramid situation because then we'll be backfilling a patrolman that ended up taking a sergeant slot um, based upon the foregoing. Uh, there can't be any promotions at this time. There just simply uh, isn't enough money. Any other discussion? I just want to mention that these are retirement positions. They're already there. Uh, actually, there was two lieutenants in that position. Right now, there's a uh, acting sergeant, in the, an acting lieutenant in that position who's presently a sergeant. Uh, by approving this resolution, we actually save $4,000 a year. Um, but I understand how they feel about it, so I guess that's the way it's going to have to be. Um, that's all. It, 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 I could add, I, I've spoken about this issue before involving lieutenants. You know, the, our police department is a paramilitary structure, and those of you that have a military structure background or paramilitary structure background understand that there are spans of authority, spans of management, levels of supervision. Uh, lieutenant is a second level of supervision over above that of sergeant. Uh, certainly, in order to hold sergeants accountable, I think we need a lieutenant to be able to make them accountable. To have one sergeant, because they're operating out of class, tell other sergeants what to do uh, causes a conflict in of, in of itself. I'm also a firm believer, if we look at the structure of our police department, lieutenants are a primary rank to separate out first-line supervision um, from the administration. It is the next level towards the administration of this department. The people that we make lieutenant are the future of the department. These are the people that will become the administration of this department in years to come. And I think it's important to develop them at this rank at this time. Uh, so I, I do support this resolution. Uh, anyone else wish to speak? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make the motion. Mr. Calder, do I have a second? I will second for purposes of a vote. Clerk, on a question, clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Lamore. No. Mr. Milano. This is the third or fourth time I voted no. Mr. Calder. Yes. Mr. Bifardi. Yes. Two yes, two no. The resolution does not carry. Number 144.15, will the clerk please read? Upon the recommendation of the Chief of Police, appoint and promote Officer Michael Alderdice to the position of investigator in the detective division at the town of Rotterdam's Police Department, full-time probationary with full employee benefits at an annual salary of $81,470.29. Effective July 22nd, 2015. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Supervisor. <coughs> if we need an investigator, I suggest that we pull the one back that's out on the task force. The last um, uh, forfeiture score that we ended up getting, we ended up getting like $8,000 because apparently the officer was not there long enough for us to ha get a reasonable share of the bounty of the uh, forfeiture. Uh, the thing is, my understanding was that he was there for eight, uh, for three years to get $8,000 or thereabouts. It is a very poor use of our resources. Therefore, if you need an investigator, have the chief pull him back. I plan on voting no to another promotion. 
uh, if I could, that was discussed there during the agenda session um, uh, before you got there. Perhaps the deputy chief would like to speak to that investigator position assigned to the task force. Uh, yes, the chief, uh, after some consultation with the board, did instruct or did inform the DEA that we are returning that detective to the detective division. They then, of course, asked us if he could stay through September, basically, so he could finish out his cases, which the chief granted. He will be coming back in September. When he was informed of that, he told us he is, in fact, retiring into September. He's leaving. He chooses not to come back. Um, so he is leaving in September. Um, the chief acquiesced to your mm -hmm. demand slash request that he be brought back, and he was being brought back. But he is, in fact, retiring in September. <coughs> um, then when do we have an, a, an absolute firm date he is retiring? He told us September 30th. I had another discussion with him this morning. He told me September 30th, which coincidentally coincides with the fiscal, the federal fiscal year. Um, what, and, what I would suggest is we have a meeting the fourth Wednesday in September. If you return this motion, I'll promote at that point. And just for a point of clarification, thank you. For a point of clarification, um, I don't know where you're getting the figure of $8,000 in asset forfeiture. That's inaccurate. Um, How much was it? Uh, we've received roughly 80000 with another close to 200, probably 180 in the process of being released. Obviously, you know, understand the, the legal hoops you must jump through, through to get these asset forfeitures. Um, it's somewhere over a quarter of a million that we're entitled to. 80000 has actually been released and is now in the town coffers. The rest of it is still within the legal system to be released. Okay, so it's eighty thousand dollars for at this point for how many years? Uh, Thirty months, give or take. I think it's thirty-two. Thir Thirty months. So, right. so at best, this is going to be almost cash neutral. Well, again, if you look at this strictly and only from a financial aspect, yeah. Yes, I guess it would be cash neutral. But again, as I've informed you and reiterated numerous times. There's more to this than that. There's operational considerations. I don't think anybody wants me to go through them again, but in a nutshell, this allows us to do drug work within a town that we could not do because obviously we're a small agency. Everybody knows our officers. Bring, bring this motion back in September and I'll consider it. Yeah, I would uh, like to say that, um, that we just were informed of all this, uh, like as we walked in the door tonight, we knew about this further in advance, we probably would have more time to consider it and think about it. I too say bring it back to us and we'll have to we'll have time to have thought it through and make a proper decision. Okay, just just for another point of clarification, we will still be substantially below the seven people we had assigned there three years ago, four years ago. We're now at five without this treatment. We're not we're at five, we'll be at four. And our contractual mandate for this position is there is zero. There are none. There are operational issues that are very, very pressing to us. Okay. But no contractual? No. Please come back in September. Yeah. Any other discussion? Uh, yes. <coughs> Going back just for one second, just to, uh, Mr. Villano made a statement that if they make a lieutenant that they would have to backfill with a sergeant per the union contract. That's incorrect. Um, that's number one. Number two, if this, if this, if right now there's a, there's a um, there's an event, there's a patrolman assigned to the detective division to try to cover the slot so they can get the work done. Um, he's being paid investigators pay first grade anytime anyway. So you're actually losing four thousand dollars more in this resolution by not passing it, and four thousand plus from the first one. So you're probably losing ten thousand dollars. And not saying yes to either one of these resolutions. And, and somebody forgets about the fact that when somebody's got a problem at 4 o'clock in the morning and they need a detective at the house, who's going to come? I mean, does anybody ever care about that? I, I'm sure the people that are waiting for somebody to come care very much. But obviously, some of our board members don't care right now. But if it depends on what the situation was reversed and Maybe if their mom and dad needed somebody at four o'clock in the morning, maybe they'd care a little more. But anyway, that's that's here and there, I guess. So you voted, you're gonna vote, we're gonna vote now, right? Uh, well, 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 well we'll wait, 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 wait a minute, we're, we're still discussing. Right. Uh, well, there's there's two problems with that argument. One, if it's $4,000 for a year, that's $333 a month. 
I told the deputy chief to come back in two months. That's $666. Number two, you told me the person's already doing the job. That's so right. whether I appoint him or not, there's going to be somebody there to help out my mom and dad when somebody burglarizes their house. Not necessarily it would be the same individual. Not necessarily because they're down from seven to four. But this individual... And how do you run a police department sending detectives out with vacations, holidays, sick time, and, and see that everybody is staffed so you got somebody at your door when you need them? You no, don't. You just don't. This but officer, it doesn't Michael... Matter. You're not gonna, it, neither you, one you of you people you are not going to vote me. for this anyway. It doesn't uh, matter what you say. Mr. De Deputy Supervisor, please, I didn't talk over you. I, 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 let, I let you talk. You told me that this individual, Officer Michael Alderdice, is doing the job anyways. The fact that I told the deputy chief to come back in two months, in a best case scenario, if I take everything that you say at face value, it's $666. The answer is going to be no. So, but don't say that nobody's going to come because you just told me that this person is doing the job. They're trained. Okay. They're trying to do the job of seven people with four. Plus one. No, that's the four. Three in Alderdice. Four. Four. It doesn't matter. Okay, it doesn't matter. Let's vote. Any other discussion? I'll enter entertain a motion. I'll make the motion. Mr. Calder, do I have a second? For purposes of a vote, I will second the motion. Uh, the question, clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Lamore? No. Mr. Villano? No. Mr. Calder? Yes. Mr. Buffard? Yes. Two yes, two no. Resolution does not carry. Number 145.15, clerk, please read. Appoint Luke Quay of Rotterdam, New York, 12306, to the position of laborer for the town of Rotterdam Highway Department, full time probationary with full employee benefits at an hourly rate of 18.8803, effective July 27th, 2015. Any discussion? Uh, actually, yes, Mr. Supervisor. I've seen a lot of these motions to come up for us to appoint people in the highway department and i never fully understood the dynamic between the highway department and the town board um you know the town law book that was provided to me by a prior member of this board um, as opposed to the one that i requested i was denied from the town board um, does not go into all of the um, intricacies of the relationship between the town board and the highway superintendent. So before we vote on this, um, coincidentally we don't have to. Um, this motion's already carried and I'm going to pass the law down to the, uh, the uh, town attorney. Um, but I, I want to read some materials directly from the town highway superintendent's manuals. Uh, section 1.11. For as long as the office of the town superintendent of highways has existed, it has not been uncommon for there to be a certain amount of misunderstanding between the superintendent and the town board. Of course, this stems from the fact that the superintendent is a so-called independent officer and has powers that are not subject to the control of the town board. Particularly, case law has gone further to uh, enumerate some of those powers, and one of those powers is listed in section 140 of the highway law and it's constituted that superintendent of highways as an officer elected independently from the other members of the town board with the independent responsibility for the maintenance and the repairs of the town highways and bridges and the removal of obstructions of brush and snow and blah 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 however that individual independently has the power to employ and direct such persons as be, may be necessary to carry out that responsibility so now Highway law, specifically 140, subsection 4, and town law, 27, subsection, I can't tell whether it's an L or a 1 based on uh, the bad photocopying. It states, maintenance personnel. Persons the superintendent may employ, if they're not an engineer, and they're not a prisoner being demanded to be called up to do work, the town board has no authority to appoint individuals. Actually, what it states is, the town superintendent of highways, within the limits of the appropriation, may employ persons necessary for the maintenance and repair of the highways and bridges and for snow removal and provide the supervision of such persons. 
the town board fixes the rate of compensation. That's literally all it says. Since the rate of compensation has already been fixed by prior town boards by approving the CSEA contract, actually I would consider this, this application this time around to be moot as there's nothing for us to do here. It's my understanding after reading the highway superintendent's manual that unless it's an engineer or a prisoner, we have no control over who this individual appoints. If, so, if you would be so kind as to pass that down to the town attorney. So are you making a motion to take this off the, um, the agenda if we don't have to vote on it? Uh, yeah. I, I make a motion to remove it as the individual is going to be hired anyways pursuant to law. Resolution made by Mr. Volano to remove it. Do I have a second? Yeah, I, I'll second it. Mr. Lamore, question? Clerk, please call the roll. To remove Mr. Lamore? Yes. Mr. Volano? Yes. Mr. Calder? So my understanding is this is strictly just to remove it. Yeah. Not that we would agree with. Right, just to remove it. Yes. Mr. Buffardi? Yes. Or yes. To Resolution remove. carries to remove 145.15. 146.15, the clerk please read. Appoint and promote Lucio San Giovanni of Rotterdam, New York, 12306, to the position of senior laborer for the highway department, full time probationary with full employee benefits at an hourly rate of $19.91, effective July 22nd, 2015. Any discussion? I want to entertain a motion. I'll move. Mr. Milano, do I have a second? A second. Mr. Lamore, on question, clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Lamore? Yes. Mr. Milano? Yes. Mr. Calder? Isn't this the same as the resolution we just done? I mean, if we have no control over the highway department, why do we say that we're going to do this? We're changing his compensation, which was specifically mentioned. It's, it's a change in his compensation, whether it's a title or not. It's a change in compensation. Yes. Mr. Bavardi? Yes. Four yes. Resolution carries number 147. Point one five. Will the clerk please read? Call for public hearing to be held on Wednesday, August 26, 2015 at 7 p.m. at the John F. Kirvin Government Center, Town Hall, 1100 Sunrise Boulevard, Rotterdam, New York, 12306 for the following purpose. Request by Capital Region Land Bank owner for the demolition of the existing single family dwelling on property located in the aquifer overlay zone. This property tax map is 20.5-7-38, is located at 8 Isabella Street, right in Junction, New York, 12150. Any discussion? I'll entertain a motion. I'll move. Mr. Milano, do I have a second? I'll second it. Mr. Lamore, a question? Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Lamore? Yes. Mr. Volano? Yes. Mr. Calder? Yes. Mr. Bavardi? Yes. Four yes. Resolution carries. Number 148.15, will the clerk please read? Call for public <coughs> hearing to be held Wednesday, August 26, 2015 at 7 p.m. at the John F. Kirvin Government Center, Town Hall, 1100 Sunrise Boulevard, Rotterdam, New York, 12306 for the following purpose. Request by Capital Region Land Bank owner for the demolition of the existing single family dwelling located in the aquifer overlay zone. This property tax map is 20.5-6-20, is located at 1299 Main Street, Rotterdam Junction, New York, 12150. Is there any discussion? I'll entertain a motion. I'll move. Mr. Bolano, do I have a second? I'll second. Mr. Lamore, the question, clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Lamore? Yes. Mr. Bolano? Yes. Mr. Calder? Yes. Mr. Bavard? Yes. Four yes. Resolution carries number 149.15. Will the clerk please read? Town Board of the Town of Rotterdam establishes the ratio of homestead and non-homestead base proportions pursuant to Article 19 of the Real Property Tax Law of the State of New York. Any discussion? I'll entertain a motion. Uh, hold on. Mr. Supervisor, I do have something I'd like to ask. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out uh, where we got these calculations, and also uh, I'd like um, Ms. Avery if she could explain uh, how these figures expect uh, affect the taxpayer and the tax rule. Because I'm showing 73 point something percent for the homestead and 26 point something for the non-homestead. And I'm, so I'm trying to figure out where we're getting these ratios because the ratio for the business owner is so much higher and we're, we would like to see more businesses come into the town and with the, the ratio being so completely different, I don't know how that can happen. 
So I was just wondering if you could explain where these numbers came from and, and how they're going to affect the taxpayer and the tax roll. Does it warp set that ratio? Yeah, that's not anything I compute. This is from Brad, the assessor. So the only part of this that I use is for the budget purposes is if you adopt this, there's a section under here, and I told Mr. Villano this. One of the letters gives me the proration of what I have to use for the homestead versus non-homestead, and I have to double check. I believe it's the R column for the 59.40, the 59.7 and 40.2, where it makes the 100%, so we use that valuation. It's not the 73.27. So that's where he sets this in once you adopt it. That's where I go back and use this part of the report. I don't do anything else with this report. Is there any way we could have Brad come in and explain explain it out through to us? That would be really good if we could get that. Sure, we could. Mm -hmm. That would be nice. We could. So I'd like to have more understanding on that because it's something we really need to work on if, if in any way possible. Yeah. trying to put words in your mouth but are you making a motion to table this no no i'm not making no no i just want oh you want some explanation i want some, I, I know it's orbs it says, orbs it says the right and we, right. we're unsure how that works out every year it changes uh sometimes to our favor and sometimes not it's in, it, it really is incredibly confusing to read it i mean it reads absolutely like stereo instructions i mean it's it's terrible well we know it's something we need to work on for the future so we'd like to have you know, the working knowledge of it, at least if you could explain it out to us a little better, that would be great. Because what ends up happening is, um, at least my understanding based off the numbers last year, businesses, uh, equally assessed businesses are taxed 62-ish percent heavier than an equally assessed residence. And I mean, it, it does create a, a great windfall but I mean, you know, we're, we're casting votes on things that I think collectively we should probably have an, an understanding at least how the numbers are generated or what the effect is um, because it's not as simple as, you know, these numbers are these numbers. I mean, even our, our trained controller who I, I spoke with briefly, you know, um, and she was trying to walk me through it and, and I couldn't get it either. I mean, it's a very complicated document. Any other discussion? I'll entertain a motion. I'll move. Mr. Villano, do I have a second? A second. Mr. Calder, a question? Court, please call the roll. Mr. Lamora? Yes. Mr. Villano? Yes. Mr. Calder? Yes. Mr. Bacard? Yes. Four yes. Resolution carries number 150.15. Will the court please read? Call for bids to be open on Friday, August 21st, 2015 at 11 a.m. for the Trunk Sewer Replacement Project for the Town of Rotterdam Public Works Department. Is there any discussion? I'll entertain a motion. I'll move. Mr. Villano, do I have a second? I'll second. Mr. Lamore on the question. Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Lamore? Yes. Mr. Villano? Yes. Mr. Calder? Yes. Mr. Lafarge? Yes. Four yes. Resolution carries number 151.15. Will the clerk please read? Approve the project additions and modifications to buildings at the Carmen Park site. Any discussion? Uh, just one real quick. Um, I do think this is a good plan, good idea. The only question I have is I'm still wondering ever since those two. Um, Little Weeds merge together to be one in Rotterdam. I'm still wondering if we have enough field, enough room in the fields to support the whole, the two Little Weeds together and now this bigger building. That's all I'm concerned with, is whether we have the room to support what we want to do. It's a great thing to do it, but whether we can support it. And it isn't something that we're going to be having to pay out of our own pockets. This is coming out of the Parkland Fund. Just so the, the home the taxpayers know. All right. Um, it, to follow up on that, I'm very excited. As a, a father of a son who's been through T-ball, I have to tell you, at least where the concession stand is located now in the bathrooms, other than the porta johns, it, it, it they're really not in a convenient location. Taking you know a four-year-old to the bathrooms is quite the trip. Uh, in any event, um, you know as exciting as this is, I wish that we did have additional park space to actually uh, place um, baseball fields. I, I know I grew up as uh, a child in the Rotterdam Little League, and now that it's cut down to just one set of fields for the youngsters, it ends up creating a problem because my son was able to practice on the fields just one time this year. 
the rest of it had to be over at the school districts, uh, which we were very fortunate to have, but it's not the same as actually practicing on your field. Uh, last year it was more the same, but I don't think we got any practices actually on the field. The only time they actually saw the fields were for games. Um, I know it's tough scheduling, but if we could find a way, it's something that for the future of the town, you know, we should look into. But this is this is a very exciting improvement for Carmen Little League. Any other discussion? I'll entertain a motion. Who is motion? No. Mr. Calder, do I have a second? I'll okay. second. Mr. Lamore and the question. Court, please call the roll. Mr. Lamore? Yes. Mr. Villano? Yes. Mr. Calder? Yes. Mr. Buffard? Yes. Four yes. Resolution carries number 152.15. Will the clerk please read? The town board of the town of Rotterdam hereby authorizes the appropriation of park land fees in the amount of 25000 and hereby modifies the general fund budget by increasing estimated revenues A510 and the revenue account entitled Parkland Fees A2001.200100 by 25000 and increasing appropriations A960 and <coughs> subsidiary account entitled Parks Improvements A7110.4153 by 25000 Any discussion? Uh, it, just briefly, Mr. Supervisor, it's uh, my understanding from this resolution, also discussions that I had with uh, the controller uh, earlier today, that we currently have about $235,000 of parkland funds, and these monies ended up getting collected from developers, as opposed to providing parkland when they put in a development, they pay cash per lot, and then we can dispense it um, for various uh, Central Park improvements. Uh, so this money is not coming out of the A fund. It's not coming out of the general levy. It is not going to affect anybody's tax bills. It's simply the <coughs> use of the money for the purpose of which it's locked up to improve the facilities that we have for uh, youth recreation and the parks in general. And just to add to that, it's actually by unit of housing. So if someone was going to build an apartment complex, it will be assessed on their uh, um, park claim fees of each individual unit that they have. Any other discussion? I'll enter, uh, excuse me. Um, I'll entertain a motion. I'll move. Mr. Milano, do I have a second? I'll second. Mr. Lamore, the question. Court, please call the roll. Mr. Lamore? Yes. Mr. Milano? Yes. Mr. Calder? Yes. Mr. Buffardi? Yes. Four yes. Resolution carries number 153.15. Will the court please read? Authorize the town to accept the deed from D'Agostino Building Blocks, Inc. 1111 Altamont Avenue, connected to New York, 12303 in a manner acceptable to the town attorney, the coordinator of the Department of Public Works, and the town of Rotterdam's highway superintendent. Any discussion? I'll entertain a motion. I'll make the motion. Mr. Lamore, do I have a second? I'll oh, second. Mr. Calder, on the question, please call the roll. Mr. Lamore? Yes. Mr. Villano? Yes. Mr. Calder? Yes. Mr. Buffard? Yes. Four yes. Resolution carries number 154.15. Would the clerk please read? Authorized gasoline expenditures from April 1st, 2015 through and including June 30th, 2015 to be transferred into various accounts. Any discussion? I'll entertain a motion. I'll move. Mr. Villano, do I have a second? I'll second it. Mr. Lamore, on the question. Please call the roll. Mr. Lamore? Yes. Mr. Villano? Yes. Mr. Calder? Yes. And Mr. Buffardi? Yes. Four yes. Resolution carries number 155.15. the clerk please read? Accept town clerk's report for the month of June 2015. Any discussion? I'll entertain a motion. I'll make the motion. Mr. Calder, do I have a second? I'll second it. Mr. Lamore, question. Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Lamore? Yes. Mr. Villano? Yes. Mr. Calder? Yes. Mr. Buffardi? Yes. Four yes. Resolution carries number 156.15. the clerk please read? Authorized budget transfers by the town controller to various accounts for 2015. Any discussion? Entertain a motion. I'll move. Mr. Villano, do I have a second? I'll second. Mr. Calder, question, clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Lamore? Yes. Mr. Villano? Yes. Mr. Calder? Yes. Mr. Buffardi? Yes. Four yes. Resolution carries. This concludes the resolution portion of tonight's meeting. We'll move one, on. One, one second, Mr. Supervisor. I hereby make a motion to add resolution 157.15 to the agenda at the request of Mr. Calder at the last meeting. He asked me to bring it back here. I hereby move to amend the rules of this town board and it's privilege of the floor component to allow discourse between the members of the town board and the members of the general public. Uh, the purpose of my motion that I just made is to invite the townspeople to actually have an open and frank discussion with us 
Um, I know when I used to appear before this board as a member of the public as opposed to one with a microphone, I found it very frustrating that I never received any response from the town board. I was constantly promised that I would receive that response in writing. Um, it's been four or five years at this point. I'm not even sure if the town remembers what my questions were at that point. Um, the thing is, I know and I've been told many times that the people are dissatisfied with the format. When they come here and they present their, their intentions and they come here to present uh, their requests for service from this town, you know, it's very difficult to sit here with a stone face and just listen to them. Um, you know, I understand that we may not always have an answer up here, but we should be able to either direct the department heads or at least indicate to them that we have some understanding of their concern or possible ways and people that they could contact to address them. Um, therefore, I make the motion that I began at the beginning of this discourse to actually amend those rules. Motion by Mr. Rolano to remove the rules of order from the public comment privilege of the four. Uh, do I have a second? Yeah, I will second that. Second by Mr. Lamore. Any question? Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Lamore? Yes. Mr. Volano? Yes. Mr. Calder? I just have a question. It's not because I disagree or agree with, with the resolution. Right now, the way this is set up is the way that we came here and this was set up when we came. Does that make it right? No, that necessarily does it. Are we not following Robert's rules of order to a certain extent right now the way our meetings are set up? Can I ask our legal counsel for that answer, please? Yes, I believe you are, but okay. I can look into it and give you a more complete answer. Yeah. Um, based, on, based on this, and this, this is, maybe this is a good idea. I don't know how we would do it yet, but I think this is the first time the supervisor heard this. Uh, he was away when we brought it up before, and that's why I told you to bring it back. Have you made any headway to contacting the supervisor since that last meeting so he understands what we were doing? I've, I've brought up this motion. This is actually the third time since I've been sitting on the board that I've brought forward this motion. Well, um, with, the, with the same constituency that we have up here. It's yeah. been the same for, and those rules were put in place during the term of uh, Supervisor Buffardi and you, Mr. Calder, uh, under the Del Gallo administration. That's true. Yep. Yes, you, you, you passed that legislation. Okay. Um, the Del Gallo administration allowed discourse with, with the public. It did. Uh, if I could add, um, it was allowed for discourse, but sometimes it was a very disruptive conversation between the audience members and the board members. It usually wound up in numerous arguments and uh, uh, without a control piece in place. Uh, I understand that um, uh, there isn't a direct back and forth giving of information in the, uh, in the form of a question from uh, the privilege of the floor. However, under miscellaneous, there can be a response from the board to respond to what was said during the discourse that comes up during the public comment privilege of the floor. My, my motion would not force any town board member up here to respond to any particular inquiry. Uh, however, I feel ramshackled that when I do have things that I would like to discuss with the people, because they don't always stay around for miscellaneous comments at the end. I mean, I would like the opportunity, and I have obeyed the rules of this legislative body that were passed during the administration immediately before mine, and have not violated them. However, there have been many times that I would have loved to engage the person at the microphone, uh, either in support or even opposition to their position. I mean, I don't, I don't understand why we can't be allowed to do that if we so choose. You know, you bring up a good point. I, I just would, how do we control the time and, and, I mean, how do we control this meeting if it's just going to be we, we I mean, we, we've been through a couple before you came on the board where there was uh, a very touchy subjects came up and there was a lot of yelling and it got pretty crazy in here for a while. How do we control this? I mean, I, and I understand what you're saying. I, I'm setting out there, I would want answers too. I mean, how, is there, should, we, should we table this for now and just actually sit down and put something together, suggesting how we do this the right way so there is some control? 
I, 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 just I'm, open it up totally and let it go and fly? Well, the thing is, I, I believe as the, you know, the chairman of the meeting, the supervisor would have the ability to bring the speakers back into order. Um, I'm not sure how much yelling that there's going to be, but, you know, I would like to start strictly enforcing the four-minute limit, and if they want time for response, they concede, you know, a minute of their time, a minute of their half of their time to actually hear a discussion. I'm not saying that we have ruling discussions that last forever. And I believe, you know, that the supervisor should not be able to uh, use the gavel uh, to promote viewpoint discrimination if it's something that maybe we don't believe in, but as long as the public is bringing uh, legitimate town concerns before its elected legislative board, and they are willing to cede a portion of their time to actually hear some kind of response, or automatically at the end of the four minutes there would be a one minute period if we all chose to speak, the meetings wouldn't go on forever. It would be slightly longer, but it's not like we have 47 people coming down to speak at every meeting either. No, well I, I, I don't think the meetings are extended by the amount of people speaking privilege to the floor. I think the meetings are extended for other purposes, and let me just leave it at that. Um, and I don't necessarily disagree that this might not be a bad idea to do this, but I would be more prepared to vote on this at the next meeting and be willing to put it on the agenda to have it voted on if I had that time to explore Robert's Rules of Order and see the way it's done in other municipalities locally. I, I am willing to withdraw my motion for this meeting. However, I would hope that there could be some exchange, at least by email, what your thoughts may be. I've kind of laid out the ground rules that I've been mulling over for the last year and a half. Okay, but what, what instead of Donald, instead of uh, taking it back, why don't we table it so we already have it in place? Well, because you're in the middle of voting. We're in the middle of voting, and, and what, what I said I would agree to do is that I will put it on the agenda for a vote next meeting, but I will be better prepared to vote if I explored a little bit uh, based on Robert's rules and based on other areas and uh, I'd like to get a little history of um, uh, some of the discontent and discord that we had during those meetings where there was an exchange of information going back and forth. It's, uh, it was, I, I know I've attended some meetings prior to the rules of orders that were not quite business-like as a result of that. So um, I, I would be better prepared to vote on this next time than I would put on the agenda. Very good. I appreciate that, Mr. Supervisor. And based upon that, I do withdraw my motion. Uh, number 157.15 was withdrawn. Anything else under resolutions? We'll move on to committee reports. Anyone have anything under committee reports? <coughs> Anyone have anything under miscellaneous? Uh, yes, Mr. Supervisor. I just got a question. Um, uh, when you <coughs> mentioned that the Parkland Fund, there was a mention of about 200. And something thousand that was in that, and we want to use 25 years. I'm just wondering um, if that money can also be used towards creating like a sports complex in the town. All these other uh, municipalities have sport complexes, and we who we don't really cater to our children the way we should, and actually, the community itself, you want to create things that want to draw people to the community, not leave the community, and that would be one. There's many municipalities, and I'm just wondering if there's all that money out there, if some of that could be used towards something like that, or is that something that wouldn't be allowed? I, I think it would be allowed under certain circumstances, and I actually think there was a plan in place for the former Merkins pit on um, Burdick Street, that the county purchased that property, with the purposes of developing a sports complex there, and our participation, because it would uh, benefit the town, would be part of that. It would, which I was told that we could use parkland fees to support that project. But I don't know where that's at. Is that do you know what's at? I have no idea about the project going through. But when you're working with parkland funds, um, there's a lot of opinions and the things put out by New York State of what you can do with them because you're collecting the assessed fees for the dwelling and all that. And what it is is normally it's something because you don't have room for the park in that area, it must be a general use to benefit all, which is you can also use it to purchase property where you could add a parkland where one doesn't exist to extend a park 
or to put something in that other people will benefit from. Now the sports complex, I don't know what the setup was for the county. I guess my question would be if it's going to start generating revenue, does that fit within the boundaries? Because again, it's a public use thing and if you start to charge people, that kind of restricts your class of who's going to be able to use it, who's not. So parkland fees is for the use of everyone to my understanding and it's there to beautify and to make a place for people to use the park that's not available in the current area that the builder is building. Now I, I, I was told that this project was approved on a county basis and we we're going to actually purchase it but uh, the, the glitch came in is when Carmen and Rotterdam Little League combined and then they had the other Carmen field and there wasn't the necessity or the urgent need to develop it at that time so I don't know where they're at but Right, because you can purchase property that is an acceptable use of parkland fees, yes. Yeah, even if they could, could you know, uh, purchase one of the properties near there to build that bigger even. But I'm just thinking, you know, there's so many uh, municipalities now that have sports complexes and it draws everyone in, not just somebody playing an individual sport, <coughs> but multiple uh, fields for different sports plus the fact that it's a park if you look at like Collins Park, how many people go to Collins Park on a daily basis? And, it's, and it draws a lot into the community and also gives back a lot to the community. It draws a lot of people in and it gives back to the community. So it's just a thought. I mean, I'm just, it wouldn't be something I would even think of if, we, if I didn't see that there was actually possibly some money involved to be able to use. But it's just something to think about, okay? Thank you very much. Yeah. A couple of other things, Mr. Supervisor. At the last meeting, we had a discussion regarding um, uh, acceptance of uh, new electrical inspectors in the town of Rotterdam. Have those concerns been addressed yet? We have, we've had two individuals now come before us because of hang-ups, hold-ups, whatever, and getting their application put through to become uh, uh, licensed inspectors to be able to do electrical work, as that's separate from the standard building department inspections. Has there been any uh, advancement on that? I could probably answer a little bit of it, Joe, but uh, yeah. I think that uh, building inspector right now, who is uh, uh, Mickey Marr, he's had a list of people that they use and contact uh, when, there's, when there's use for them, they work for them. You know, we don't, give the, we don't certify them as inspectors, they're already certified to bring it to us and have to prove to us they are certified and such. Um, so he has the list. Now I'm not sure, I think the first fellow that was here a while back, I believe he was put on the list, but I'm not 100% sure. The second one I'm not, I'm not sure about. So I can check for you, but. Uh, can, can you send me an email Mickey, on that? Yeah, I, I know he filed an application, I just don't know if it was approved. I don't either, I, I'm not sure. Okay. But I'll check with Mickey. Um, next, it's come to my attention um, three or four months ago, and I've, and I've sent emails out on it and uh, Mr. Supervisor, you said that you would get back to me uh, within a week, about four months ago. Um, we have a member of our ethics board who has uh, left the town of Rotterdam for beautiful, sunny Florida. Um, so I'm pretty sure that doesn't qualify him to remain on the ethics board anymore. Um, I, would, uh, I would like, um, since the administration already has three members, I would like to have the Republican aspect of this because it does have to be by party. It's specifically party designated. I would like um, for me and uh, Mr. Lamore to uh, nominate somebody to fill that inherent vacancy. But the purpose of me bringing that up in this meeting is because I believe that we should probably get a letter of resignation from this individual rather than it just being common knowledge that he's no longer within the town. I, I agree with both that. It would be your appointment to divide it up equally amongst political parties. I certainly would entertain and put on the, the agenda to have that name go forward. But I was told that he didn't move. He's just there now on vacation, but I mean, he's not permanently moved, no. He will know by September what he's doing. So if you want to wait till then or whatever, whatever, it's up to you. Okay, um, is he, um, since I, I, I know that there's a, uh, a familial relationship between you and this individual, mm -hmm. do, you, uh, do you know, um, is he willing to resign to move this forward? Or I have to he... ask him, Joe. You want me to ask him? I can. Uh, would you please? Absolutely. All right, wonderful. Um, the next thing that I want to talk about is, um, 
I still don't understand how we submitted for the tax freeze to benefit our residents. Um, it's my understanding that only the town of Glenville did not join the county's plan. And back in March, there was a definitive statement from me and Mr. Lamore that we are not joining the county's plan. And that I asked you prior to the time expiring how we were going to go forward without joining the county's plan. And I still haven't received a clear answer of, because I think it's just not true. I think we did join the county's plan over the objection of me and Mr. Lamore. Well, we did not join the county's plan. I'll defer to Ms. Every to, to speak about this. We agreed to join the paperwork filing as requested by the state, and that's it. We do an individual plan that we file the paperwork with the county, and the county submits on our behalf. But Ms. Every, you can address that. Okay. I, I agree, and I agree that I accepted your point that we weren't going to be part of a county plan. It's my understanding that the county as a whole would not have gotten the tax credit if we did not join their plan. It's my understanding that there was shared use of the Rotterdam savings to benefit our county legislature. Now, I think ours, our savings is individual. We have some individual uniqueness to our plan, um, specifically the, the paramedic service that we no longer pay for. We're able to deduct that, uh, whereas no other, no other government in the county would be able to do do that so that would be a separate portion there'd be other ones that we would be able to file for too <coughs> and uh, uh, I, I actually have an email from Ms. Every that, that explained this so I can pass it on to you if I can find it I've, I, I would love to have that because I did inquire and I've not received a, a, okay. f a formal but response I agree to I agree that we agreed not to go with a county plan that would be an individual town of Rotterdam thing and it would certainly benefit the town of Rotterdam because our savings are unique and probably more substantial than other governments within the county but Ms. Every, could you address that, please? That's what we did is we had to put together our own catalog of what we saw as the projection of the savings of ending the two plans. One was joining this shared service of the UCC. One was ending the paramedic program. So what we did was we took the base portions that we had for the last full year of operation, calculated that forward to see what we would save, and we used basically the cost that were the easiest to track, which would, of course, be personnel because things like clothing and other items that we weren't sure of that from past vouchers that we would have to do more investigation weren't going to provide a substantial amount into this figure. So we took and we made our own spreadsheets, our own paperwork, submitted all the documentation we were supposed to to New York State. It was gathered by Schenectady County but submitted on our behalf. Um, it's my understanding they took each batch and submitted it that way to New York State acting as the general collection point because the understanding by the county was as again, to share services under the government's, governor's mandate, they were providing the service for us as being a collection point, forwarding the information to the government, governor as provided, and that was all. They weren't, going, they weren't participating in our program or savings. They were providing the information for us as the submitter. Okay, I think I brought this up at the last meeting. Can you put a copy of our entire submission in my mailbox here? Mm -hmm. I, I would greatly appreciate that. And I'll see if I can find the original email that I got from Ms. Every explaining this, and I'll send it to you. Okay. Thank you again. Anything else under miscellaneous? I have, I have one thing, Mr. Supervisor. <clears throat> I, uh, the, the, the thing you brought up regarding the highway department and uh, pretty much running its own self without any input from the town board. Unfortunately, that, that seems to be the case. Um, I. I don't believe that's true, but if it's true, I think there's some deep implications and in, in, in responsibility that comes along with that. And a lot of peripheral things that the town board does approve that would, I mean, we sure make our life easier, let's be honest with you. But I think it dumps a whole lot of things that, peripheral things, that they're not equipped to handle. The Period. Only, the, the only and and, I, and I, I can see a real issue with that if it's true. I do not believe it's true, and I'm hoping that that uh, our legal counsel will look into this. I'm sure she will. I think she's looking forward to it, and uh, uh, I'm sure we'll have an answer shortly. Great. But the other thing, I'm, wait, wait, let, let me acknowledge this. Whether it's true that uh, he can hire and not need our approval or not, 
I acknowledge the fact that the highway superintendent is individually elected and holds that office uh, and uh, is responsible for that office. I acknowledge that. I accept that to be true. Uh, just this funding issue, I think we need to get pinned on. Uh, the funding issue, see, that's the only, that, that's, that's the only hang up. We do control the purse strings. We're the legislative body that ends up providing well, you said his budget. That, that, that the contract has already acknowledged what the and first he can hire are. who he wants. You said correct. The individual that he hires, whether he's going to hire, not going to hire, who he hires, is all his prerogative. The pay is based upon the past contract. The fact that we are changing the compensation to the senior pay when the compensation issue comes in. Because it would be, um, we could be arbitrary in that. I know traditionally this board has automatically advanced uh, around the time of one year as long as they meet the performance requirements. But the fact that we are increasing somebody's salary when it's optional, that does fall back to us. So I think that's the differential why I allowed one to go through and one not. Well, I would just note that I looked at this issue in 2012 or 2013, so I do have a file on the issue okay. um, because it was raised previously, and I think that what we're missing from this discussion are the wide varieties of the opinions of the Office of State Controller regarding the issue in terms of compensation. And um, the other issue is that the highway law that you mentioned, 140, um, talks about the appointment, but then 141 talks about specific highway work. So by not appointing this person, this person can only be paid from the highway fund, meaning that um, this uh, employee, for the sake of argument, um, let's say that it moves forward in the way that you proposed today, would be ineligible to pick up brush and leave or engage in non-highway um, fund tasks. And so... I believe it says brush on there as well. Yeah, if you were trimming on the side of the road. So that's what the opinions mean regarding that. So I'd be happy to look into it and give the board a more global opinion and address each of the issues. Um, but I have looked at this before, so I can give you that basic information here this evening. So, uh, you know, and then the other issue becomes, in terms of county civil service, in terms of the description, if the description of labor doesn't exactly match that of um, what is allocated, in terms of job responsibilities in the highway law, then we may also have an issue there. So I'll look at that as well. And I can see sometimes, I mean, department heads run into a problem with <clears throat> us having to transfer funds to to that department because for some reason that, you know, things were not planned and they try to plan everything, they can't plan everything. But let's say he runs out of money, we gotta move money there. We gonna vote on that? Uh, well, we, he would be in a position where he would have to do the layoff. He would have to do the layoff, not See, us. It, it, it amounts to, it, it's, it's a huge thing what you said, and if it's true, it changes the whole aspect of what this board does. Uh, it, the, really the, huge. The, and it dumps on so much onto him. Un unfortunately, that's the elected position. I didn't, I didn't write the book. Um, I only quoted no, what the book let's said. Let's see what happens. Like I said, it makes our lives easier. Yep. It's I, a lot easier. I, I think it's his authority. Anything else under miscellaneous? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll move. Mr. Villano, do I have a second? I'll uh, second. Mr. Lamore, all in favor? Aye. 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 Please adjourn. Thank you very much.